Hello everyone and thanks once again for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on the 16th day of May 2022. I'm David Percy. Up first, uh, looking at the river breakup map for Monday. Today, you can see uh, still quite an area of uh, mostly ice on the lower Yukon River Valley areas there. And then it becomes uh, a little more open through the delta and southern rivers uh, pretty much open now uh, across, the, of course, the Sitna, Copper River, and uh, the Kuskokwim, as well as the Tanana. And still looking at uh, some open there on the Noatak River, a couple of spots there. The uh, Kobuk River, still mostly ice, as well as uh, Colville and Saguan River, Sag River and Colville Rivers, all the North Slope Rivers are solid ice yet. And so really not a lot much different from what we saw yesterday. And moving on to the hazardous weather graphic, still have the flood warning going for Glen Allen, north of the Glen Highway, uh, for snow melt flooding that's going on on uh, Crooked Creek there. And that's going to, that warning rains out until 10 a.m. Tuesday morning. And satellite imagery showing a band of moisture rolling up into the southeast coast there into the northern panhandle bringing some areas of light rain with it and then more showery conditions moving in to the southern southeast coast and kind of a break in between there and over the interior we've got bands of uh, cirrus and then some isolated showers coming southward there through the western interior areas uh, Yukon Cusquam Delta, but a lot of sunshine over Bristol Bay and Kodiak. Uh, mostly sunny morning over Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula. And then those clouds dropping down from the north uh, increase the clouds. Maybe for a cloudy afternoon here, uh, Anchorage, Palmer, and down toward Kenai and Soldotna. But still pretty nice over the Kenai Peninsula and North Gulf Coast. And then variably cloudy with some isolated showers over the eastern Alaska range. About a tenth of an inch of precipitation fell with some light rain in Fairbanks in the last 12 hours and uh, about two tenths of an inch falling along the eastern North Gulf Coast and areas of the northern Panhandle. Otherwise uh, pretty storm free out over the Bering, or it is storm free over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. You can see some uh, mid and high level clouds, maybe a little bit of moisture trying to work into the Shimia area there with that next front, but the high pressure is keeping that back to the west, although the entire pattern shifting eastward a little bit, but the ridge uh, sending most of that moisture way up to the north and it kind of recurves around there in the Chuck C. C. and grazes the Arctic coast, like uh, one system coming across today there in the eastern Arctic coast brought some uh, light snow flurries and fog there that uh, coming across uh, the Chukchi Sea behind that high pressure and uh, again just uh, mid and high level clouds coming down from north to south there across the uh, interior areas with a fair amount of clearing as well uh, with the uh, isolated showers along the Alaska range into the eastern Copper River Basin and the eastern North Gulf Coast with the uh, rainfall over the northern panhandle. Another front beginning to develop there off the coast and we'll see for tonight. Uh, that should start to increase in rain late tonight, start to pick the winds up a little bit. Small craft advisory level winds coming into the uh, at least the central and southern southeast coast and showers over the inland areas. Still a chance of showers. Prince William Sound, uh, Whittier Passage, C uh, Portage eastward there, passes Canal as well, into the uh, North Gulf Coast and the uh, Coast Range and the Wrangell Mountains. Otherwise pretty dry over interior Alaska for tonight. Still some lingering flurries and fog for the eastern Arctic coast into the North Slope. And high pressure controlling the weather out over the Bering Sea, keeping that front back to the west. <clears throat> and for tomorrow, see those uh, showers end that kind of come down and clip the Alaska Peninsula and Fox Islands uh, tonight. And those are pretty much gone as that next front edges uh, far enough to the east with the high center moving eastward a little bit to allow that into at least the Shimia Atu area. And that's about it. And that's just some light rain 
Uh, winds not much of a factor at all with that. In fact, looking pretty light and variable for Tuesday for the winds in the adak atka area. Purple offs much of the southern Bering Sea there and just a breeze over the Alaska Peninsula, but dry, mostly sunny skies from Alaska Peninsula, all of the southwest coast, uh, Bristol Bay, Togiak Bay, Cuscombe Bay, right up into the western interior valleys. Pick some clouds up maybe for the Brooks Range, North Slope and Arctic Coast, but dry conditions and still a chance of showers there, Eagle east or westward and over the White Mountains, Western Alaska Range, just scattered showers over the mountainous terrain in other words, but it could become a little more widespread there over the central and eastern Copper River Basin, Wrangell Mountains up to Nabezna, Northway and Toke, and back down toward uh, Yakutat, uh, kind of a cloudy, showery day tomorrow. Wind, uh, small craft advisory level winds coming into the uh, Panhandle again on the south coast of that next front with uh, periods of rain and drier to the north. And then on Wednesday, that low center drops off to the southeast now, west of the uh, Queen Charlotte Islands. The other one kicks off into British Columbia, so that's going to make for a dry day with uh, more of a north to northeast offshore wind flow at the surface. Not very strong, but enough to dry it out and then the shower activity and look for some sunshine central and northern areas, even a few sun breaks possible over the southern southeast coast. Interior Alaska. Mostly sunny, a little warmer in the afternoon highs for Wednesday. High pressure shifting eastward there, and that, but it's still huge enough that it's keeping that frontal boundary, is weak, a weak frontal boundary, keeping the light rain way out there over the western Aleutians. So light winds and dry conditions over just about all of it, all of the state on Wednesday. Lows tonight in the uh, teens, single numbers, actually five to 15 over the North Slope and the lower teens over the Arctic coast and into the 20s, Brooks Range, upper 20s to mid 30s for uh, areas south of the Brooks Range in the interior, and that extends all the way out to the Pribilof, so the upper 20s, south of the Alaska Range, southern Alaska in the 30s to near 40 over the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, mid 50s, central interior, and 55 to 61 for the Susitna Valley, and down into the Kenai Peninsula, mostly mid to upper 50s, also for Bristol Bay and 40s for the uh, Lucians and upper 30s for the highs for the Pribilofs, mid 30s St. Lawrence Island. Highs right around 20 or 20 to 25, upper teens and mid 20s for the Arctic coast into the North Slope and then Brooks Range, Arctic Village, high 41 but Anatovic just 28. Uh, Bettles 52, Fort Yukon also looking at 52. And then the lows Wednesday morning in the 30s lower 40s for the southeast coast, upper 30s lower 40s for the north gulf coast as well as south central Alaska, mid 30s in the Copper River Basin, lower to mid 30s in the central interior areas, and upper 20s lower 30s, Norton Sound, Seward, uh, the Seward Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island area, and back down into the mid teens, mid to upper teens for the uh, north slope and the Arctic coast, and uh, mid to upper 30s out over the Aleutians, but still down into the upper 20s for the Pribilofs, followed by highs near 40 for St. Paul. A little warmer in the interior now, seeing some lower 60s starting to show up. McGrath, Nikolai, Tanana, otherwise mid 50s, lower 60s for the Susitna Valley in the Kenai Peninsula. Also for the southeast coast, 25 to 30 for the Arctic coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line of weather graphic for Tuesday morning, IFR, North Slope, Arctic Coast, into the Brooks Range, including Attigan Pass. Marginal VFR down the eastern interior becomes widespread IFR from the uh, eastern Alaska Range across the uh, eastern and central Copper River Basin, almost down to, uh, well, down to Thompson Pass, maybe Valdez, Keystone Canyon, otherwise Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, Klondike Highway, IFR, marginal for the Panhandle. Good VFR, central interior, westward into the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island and Nunavak Island, all VFR, marginal VFR for the Pribilofs. IFR, Alaska Peninsula, and the Aleutians to Amchitka Island, or Kiska Island, Shimina too, VFR to start the day with. But that becomes IFR for the entire Aleutian chain, eastward to, uh, well, Atka, Nunavak Island, Partially marginal, Unalaska Island, VFR. And the Alaska Peninsula looking good. Western Central Interior, uh, VFR. And looks like VFR, the entire stretch of the Yukon River. IFR now lingering eastern, north slopes of the eastern, eastern Brooks Range. Marginal VFR for the Central and Eastern Arctic Coast. 
and mostly marginal for the panhandle. And we've got a pretty widespread area of marginal VFR from the White Mountains across the uh, upper Tanah Valley into the central and eastern Alaska Range, Copper River Basin, down into uh, Kinnick and Turnigan Arms, more likely Madnuska Valley, part of the Kinnick Arm there in the Prin Prince William Sound, Resurrection Bay, VFR Kodiak Island, Cook Inlet, and the Susitna Valley. And for Wednesday morning, IFR, eastern and central north slope into the Brooks Range once again, marginal VFR areas of across the eastern interior, especially from the eastern Brooks Range across the Copper River Basin. Some of that again slides down in across the Talkeetna Mountains, turning an arm, Portage, Whittier, into the uh, southward across, uh, oh, probably Cooper Landing right on the edge there, Broadview, same thing, Resurrection Bay, though, Moose Pass right in the marginal VFR. And for the uh, central southern panhandle, marginal VFR, but good VFR there for the western part of the state with IFR in the Bering Sea to the Aleutians. Wednesday afternoon, again, IFR extending from uh, Cape Lisbon southward through the Bering Strait coast, uh, Seward, or St. Lawrence Island, down to the Pribloffs, and from Atka westward, and then from Unalaska Island eastward, good VFR right across the Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak Islands. You can see the North Gulf Coast. Panhandle finally completely VFR and uh, northward VFR all the way until you get to the Eastern Brooks Range, North Slope Arctic Coast, marginal. Anatovic, marginal VFR, and Adigan go IFR, especially on the northern entrance for Tuesday. Lake Clark and Merrill, good VFR tomorrow, and rainy, same forecast, VFR. Windy, starting out marginal, kind of right on the marginal VFR zone there, so it could go either way throughout the entire day. Isabel, though, marginal VFR looks uh, pretty good. And Mentasta, look for IFR at times, either approach. And Tanita, marginal VFR. And uh, occasional marginal VFR for Portage, or mostly marginal. And Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR. Freezing levels, uh, 4,000 feet right over Kodiak Island. And then uh, looks like the uh, southeast coast, kind of in the two to 4,000 foot range, sort of southern Alaska. And the northern part of the state, northern Bering Sea, about one to 2,000 feet. But with uh, warm upper high pressure over the western Bering Sea, you can see 10,000 feet right to the Aleutians or just to the south, 6,000 feet up into the Russian Far East. Icing. Looks like uh, rime icing in over the uh, southern three quarters of the panhandle tomorrow. Looks like the heavier stuff, suitable moderate, will stay Dixon entrance in the Queen Charlottes. And then mixed icing over the southeast interior to the North Gulf coastal areas. Jet stream. Upper high pressure kind of shifting eastward a little tomorrow. That puts the jet over the western interior 75 to 100 knots from basically the north, northwest, and lighter winds on the western Arctic coast. And at 9,000 feet, we've got 45 knot southerlies working into the uh, Dixon entrance area southern panhandle. And then north to northeast, 30 to 40 knots there from uh, coming down across the west coast into the Alaska Peninsula. 3,000 feet, much lighter winds, but still up to 35 knots there. In fact, it looks like even 45 knots or 50 knots for the southern panhandle. That translates into uh, considerable moderate chop developing. Prince of Wales Island, Ketchikan, light to isolated moderate chop for the southern half of the southeast coast. Smooth everywhere else. be many miles long, from 1 to 100 feet high, traveling at 400 miles per hour. This ocean monster is known as a tsunami, and it can wreak havoc on coastal populations and landscapes. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves caused by any large and sudden disturbance of the sea surface. Tsunamis can be generated by landslides, volcanic eruptions, or even meteorite impacts in the ocean but they are most often caused by an earthquake where there's a sudden displacement of the ocean floor. When that happens, there's a transfer of energy from the sea floor to the ocean, causing waves on the surface to radiate outward in all directions. In deep waters, these waves may not even be detectable. But when the tsunami enters shallower waters, the wave speed slows and its height increases. The water along the coast may recede noticeably. A large wall of turbulent water, called a bore, may also form. When the tsunami hits, 
It may come ashore like a fast-rising flood and strike with devastating force. The series of waves may continue for hours. The first one may not be the last or the largest. For your safety, know the potential warning signs of an incoming tsunami. A strong earthquake that causes difficulty standing. A rapid rise or fall of the water along the coast. A loud ocean roar. When you're in a coastal area, it's important to keep alert for messages from local officials, such as lifeguards, police, the U.S. Tsunami Warning Centers, and NOAA All Hazards Radio. If you find yourself in a location of a tsunami strike, here's what you need to do to stay safe. Keep calm. Walk or run to higher ground, 100 feet above sea level or one mile inland. Do not drive. Keep roads open for emergency vehicles. If you cannot move to higher ground, use the stairs to get to the third floor or higher in a sturdy building. Follow all instructions from local officials and stay out of coastal areas until authorities issue an all clear. Tsunamis can strike any coastline in the world and can affect locations thousands of miles away from where they formed. They may be uncommon, the devastation they cause makes them a deadly force in nature. For more information on tsunamis, go to the following sites. Tsunami, a killer wave, speeding across the ocean at 400 miles an hour. It smashes into land, destroying everything in its path. Tsunamis do not have a season, but they can strike any coast at any time. If one forms close to the shore, the shaking of the earth and a loud roar may warn of its approach. But when a tsunami forms across the ocean, it can take hours to reach the shore. Enough time to warn people to move to higher land. Over the past 20 years, NOAA has developed DART, a real-time monitoring system that provides data for forecasting tsunamis. The DART systems have been deployed in earthquake-prone areas throughout the ocean, including the Pacific and Indian basins. A DART system combines a surface buoy and a sensor on the ocean floor. This sensor detects changes in water pressure and seismic activity and transmits the data back to the surface. If these changes indicate a tsunami may form, the buoy signals an alert via satellite to the tsunami warning centers in Alaska and Hawaii. Back at the centers, scientists plug the data into pre-existing models. These models predict the height, the arrival time, and the coastal locations that the tsunami will hit. Watches and warnings are issued to the affected communities so preparations can begin. Today, 47 DART stations are positioned all around the world, ready to detect and warn coastal communities about the next potential tsunami. With the DART system and tsunami warning centers in place, we are now better prepared to predict a killer wave before it strikes. December 26, 2004. What began as an undersea earthquake in the Indian Ocean ended as the most deadly tsunami in recorded history, with nearly 240,000 lives lost. This was a devastating wake-up call to coastal communities and tsunami research. Prior to this event, only six of NOAA's Deep Ocean Assessment and Reporting of Tsunami, or DART, buoys were in place. Scientists could only predict tsunami arrival times, not flood potential. 
and there was not a global tsunami warning system. Today, 10 years later, we can tell a different story. U.S. and international coastlines are far better prepared for such a catastrophe, thanks in large part to research and technology developed at the NOAA Center for Tsunami Research at Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory. NOAA's DART array is now complete, with 39 buoys operated by the National Weather Service's National Data Buoy Center. Along with 21 international buoys, this array can measure a tsunami wave as small as one centimeter in the open ocean and provide these data in real time to forecast when a tsunami may hit the coast and how much flooding there will be. NOAA scientists and engineers are currently testing the fourth generation DART buoy that will be able to measure local tsunamis as well as distant ones. Flooding forecast models incorporate local topography and historical tsunami data in order to more accurately predict exactly how a tsunami might behave when it reaches shore. NOAA has 75 site-specific models that can provide high-resolution flooding forecasts for effective response and mitigation during a tsunami event. NOAA has gathered data from every tsunami since 2004 to improve its forecast models. Today, it operates the world's only real-time tsunami flooding forecast system using DART data to accurately compute flooding forecasts. The NOAA Tsunami Warning Centers make tsunami data available on the internet and issue advisories, watches, and warnings through the emergency alert system and via NOAA weather radios. While it is impossible to prevent a tsunami, we are now much better prepared to detect them and predict their paths and impacts so those in coastal communities can take the steps necessary to safely protect themselves. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis uh, still showing a little bit of ice along the uh, Yukon Delta coastline there and along the coastal areas of uh, Norton Sound, but about the same uh, actually open water there in the central sound and then continuing to thin out from St. Lawrence Island to the Bering Strait uh, slowly. And moving on to coastal water forecast, small craft advisories tomorrow for the um, entire southeast coast and the outer coastline. For southeast winds, 25 knots, seas uh, 8 to 11 feet, and Clarence Strait, small craft advisory, south winds 25 knots, southeast 20 knot winds, and the forecast for Stevens Passage, and the northern inner channels and inside waters looking at south winds at 15 knots. For Wednesday, north winds 15 knots for the central and northern inner channels, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, Stevens Passage, Clarence Strait now northwest 15 knots, and for the central and south coast, we've got small craft advisories now for north winds at 25 knots with uh, seas around 8 to 9 feet. And the north coast, north-northwest winds at 20 knots. <clears throat> Prince William Sound, variable winds 10 knots, 2-foot seas. Cook Inlet, variable winds at 10 knots with 2-foot seas. And uh, Tamashak Bay, the Barren Islands, and the western north Gulf Coast, all looking light and variable tomorrow. Seas running 2 to 4 feet. And then the eastern North Gulf Coast, uh, 20 knot winds from the east with seas at 6 feet. Outlook for Wednesday, Prince William Sound, west winds 10 knots, 2 foot seas. North Gulf Coast, west winds 15 knots with 4 to 5 foot seas. And the Barren Islands, west winds 20 knots, seas 5 feet. Kamishak Bay, west winds 15 knots. Cook Inlet, southwest breeze at 10 knots. Kodiak Island, Tuesday, variable winds, 10 knots, seas 2 to 3 feet. Small craft advisories for the Alaska Peninsula for northwesterlies at 25 knots. And Bristol Bay looking at a north wind at 20 knots. And for Wednesday, Kodiak Island west-southwest, 15 knots. And variable to 15 knot winds everywhere else uh, with seas running 2 to 3 feet. And for on Alaska Island tomorrow, small craft advisories, north to northwest winds at 20 to 25 knots. Unimak Island, light northerlies at 15 knots. Adakanatka under high pressure, look for light variable winds at 10 knots with seas down to 4 feet. And for uh, Amchitka to Shimia, winds will be southeast at 15 knots. 
Kiska to Shimia, southeast winds 15 knots on Wednesday. I'm Chitka Island, variable at 10. And for Adak and Atka, east winds 15 knots. Unimak Island, east winds 15 to 20 knots. And Unalaska Island, east northeast at 15 to 20 knots. Small craft advisories for the Kuskokwim Delta Coast, south of Nunavak Island, Tuesday. North winds 25 knots. Otherwise, northwest 15 for the Pribilofs, west 15 for St. Matthew Island, St. Lawrence Island, north winds at 15 knots. And for Wednesday, pretty light variable winds at 10 knots for the Yukon Delta Coast, southwest to 10 for St. Lawrence Island, variable at 10 for the Pribilofs, and southeast 15 for St. Matthew Island, Kuskokwim Delta Coast, north at 15. Central Coast, uh, Central Arctic Coast tomorrow, east northeast winds at 10 knots for the eastern North Gulf, eastern Arctic Coast, north winds at 15 knots, 20 knot easterlies from Point Lay to Cape Thompson, Cape Thompson to Wales, north winds at 10 knots. Moving ahead to Wednesday, south winds at 20 knots now from Wales to Cape Beaufort, and for the uh, central and western Arctic Coast, winds will be southeast at 15 knots. A little more of a breeze there for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, looking uh, easterly 15 to 20 knots. For tonight, look for some uh, flurries and light snow shower condition there for the eastern Arctic coast down into the north slope there, that very weak trough. Scattered showers, Prince William Sound into the uh, North Gulf Coast Range, Wrangell Mountain areas, maybe as far north as the eastern Alaska Range. Rain and breezy conditions on the increase of the panhandle. And for uh, Tuesday, Increasing wind and rain, southern southeast coast, uh, variably cloudy with some scattered shower activity over the mountainous terrain of south central Alaska. A little more widespread there for the eastern Copper River Basin areas. High pressure out in the Bering Sea keeps it dry and mostly sunny over the western half of the state. And for Wednesday, <clears throat> high pressure shifts eastward to about the coastline, so look for uh, sunny skies, a little warmer temperatures in the afternoon over much of interior Alaska. Still some lingering afternoon showers over the east and southeast interior. Dry for the panhandle, and it looks uh, like some light rain will move into the far western illusions with a weakening front there. Otherwise, the Arctic coast north slope will be dry. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.